guys path of gaming right here right now bringing you another tft video of me doing my papa paths lullabies and today we'll be going over traits now there are 13 origins as well as 14 classes so there's different origin of classes but right now it doesn't really matter uh, whether it's origin or class the only difference is that typically most units have one origin in one class apart from for example pike whose uh, origin is cultist but his class is assassin and slayer so some units have have uh, two like double up on one so they have three but most of them have ju have just two so cultists once your team loses 50% of their health galio is summoned slamming into the largest cluster of enemies and knocking them up galio strength increases based on the total star level of all active cultists so yes if you have four cultists it's a bit better than three five is better than than three uh, the star level of your cultist also matters like for galio to have more hp and do more damage but the most important thing is you want to have three cultists or six or nine uh, typically you want to add in other things and as i've recommended many many times before you need keepers with cultists you want to have uh, another keeper like a jarvan right like a rakan uh, even even uh, Kenny is really good. Whatever keeper you can you can put in. Uh, the reason why you need a keeper or why you want to play a keeper with Elise is because it's loses like once your team loses fifty percent of their health, the keeper shield counts as health. Alternatively, if you're not playing keepers, I would suggest the Locket of the Iron Iron Solari, because that's a, a lot of extra health which your team will lose, but they won't be dead. So like otherwise loses means that like one unit is dead and the other unit is half dead and then Galio comes down. So if you have uh, if you have uh, the keeper shield, maybe if you have like four units, maybe one unit will be dead or maybe no units will be dead. Maybe just the keeper shield will be gone and like two units will be hurt and then Galio will slam down and stun your opponent. And all the units will keep fighting while they're stunned and while they're typically when they get stunned, uh, they might start attacking Galio at, at uh, 6. Galio has a taunt, so it's really, really powerful. Uh, I think Cultus is a, is a great comp to kind of propel you through the early game. If you have 3 on stage 2, you're fine. If you manage to have 6 on stage 3, typically you're, you're just either going to win streak all the way through or you're going to preserve a lot of HP as long as you have some matching synergies to go with it, like Keeper, um, like uh, Sharpshooter, like duelist, uh, potentially assassin, but typically, typically what you want, maybe mages. If we can, we can run three mages, uh, two keepers, two sharpshooters, and uh, two duelists, potentially assassins or or vanguards later, mystics way 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 later. Uh, I have not tested uh, nine cultists. If you somehow get it on eight, it's okay. But the thing is, you don't really have uh, that many uh, synergies, right? It's just cultists. They have no synergies like no uh, classes that, that overlap. So it's very, very tough. Uh, so you're relying on Galio to clean up and if they have a set or if they have like some way to, to kill the Galio after, after he spawns, uh, you're gonna lose. So I think, I think uh, nine cultists is okay, kind of in the late game, but for the end game, you should probably try to pivot out and, uh, or like get to nine and try to maybe sell your chosen, find something a little bit stronger. Daredevil. Um, essentially this is just Samira, she seeks the thrill of battle, dashing after every other attack, after every dash they, they shield themselves with 10% of their max health, I think it's only 10%, and next fires two shots, getting style, at max style they cast their spell, base style rank increases star level. Um, so she basically shoots, then she like dashes, shoots twice, dashes, so she just like jumps around, that's, that's essentially uh, Samira, I've discussed her at length. Like how to position Samira, make sure that she doesn't dash into too many units. Uh, like some good items on her. I think I mentioned like RFC so she stays away. And then like Deathblade, IE, Last Whisper, GA, QSS, all these good things. She's a, she's a perfect AD carry. Divine. Now, Divine, uh, you can get a Chosen Divine and with the sword you can get to 8. That's the first spatula. So I always write the spatula like this. Upon attacking six times or dropping below 50% health, Divine Champions remove all crowd control and ascend, taking 45% reduced damage and doing 45% bonus true damage for the duration. So 2 Divine is kind of like a mini QSS, 
Uh, four divine is actually a bit more than a QSS. You actually have like reduced damage for a bit, and you do more damage. Six divine is is very very powerful, but I don't think you want to chase it. Like six divine is is okay if you have like a relatively tanky comp, because nine seconds like once you get to six divine like the mid late game, the fights don't usually last much longer than nine seconds or like the fight starts, then your divines kind of drop drop down or start attacking, and then they ascend. So six divine is probably the cap. I've never actually played eight divine. It, it's probably okay. Like fifteen seconds is longer than eight, but since uh, longer than nine, but since nine seconds is usually enough, you don't want to bother. Um, there's a good overlap with with Jackson Lee Sin, so you can always run Jackson Lee Sin for Divine Duelist. Um, if you're running a Kalecom, for example, and then you can add an Irelia, so then you just have like four divines, not bad. It it gives Kale more damage. These guys are very tanky. Irelia is very tanky. It it's just a good front line. Dragon Soul, the first Dragon Soul ally to take damage in combat receives the Dragon's Blessing. While blessed, the unit gains bonus attack stats, and every fifth attack fires a Dragon Soul Blast, dealing fifty percent of the target's maximum health and magic damage. On death, this blessing passes to the closest Dragon Soul ally without a blessing. So I've tried to experiment a little bit of Dragon Soul. It's very like difficult positioning wise. You gotta make sure that you put like a unit that will die in the front to pass the buff to the back. So for example, if you're playing Braum, like Braum will just get hit and he'll never die. So then the buff doesn't get passed, for example, to Aesol or to Bran or to Tristana. So like if you have a chosen Tristana or chosen Bran Dragon Soul, the way to do it is you can put Tristana or Bran like one star in the front, make sure they kind of die first, then you have some tanks. So that the buff is transferred to, to Tristana. So it's, it's very tricky. Um, I think three Dragon Soul, like uh, the, the, the one blessing is good enough. Like if you manage to get it on Tristana, because she already has like her own attack speed buff. So three star Tristana can actually be pretty powerful. Uh, like Shiv is one of the build, like one of the things you put on her. You can put a Rage Blade on her. You can put a Hodge on her. Um, so she can use the buff. And then later on, you can use it on, on Aso or on Swain. Uh, actually, actually, yeah, very good user of it is also obviously Olaf, since he has crazy attack speed. So like, he's almost a duelist essentially because his attack speed scales insanely once he ulties. He has very very fast attack speed. So if you get the buff on Olaf, like just just running three Dragon Souls, you just need it on him, right? Forty forty percent attack speed and spell power. Spell power means if if he has it when he ulties, he's gonna get even more attack speed and go even crazier. And then the attack speed is really good for him, so he can kill units faster. Uh, it's also fine on, on Aesol, for example, for, for the spell damage. Attack speed helps him cast faster. Uh, Swain, sure, the spell spell damage is also good. So uh, I, I suggest like in the early game, it's actually decent if you manage to position correctly and get it on Tristana, for example. Because the Dragon Soul buff every fifth attack is decent. Like in the early game, it usually helps finish off units. In the late game, uh, it's also fine on, on Olaf, for example, or on Aesol. Uh, but it's, I think it's really hard running six Dragon Souls. I don't think it's worth it. I've tried, I even tried nine. That didn't do anything. Uh, like the comp is just, it's just not strong enough. So I would say splash three. Uh, if you're running an Olaf carry or Aesol carry, you can splash three, especially since like Braum doubles up with Aesol. So if you have a chosen Dragon Soul or your Dragon Soul spat, then that's fine. And Olaf, like, Sure, Olaf and Swain are really good, then you can just add in one more. So consider Dragon Soul and really consider positioning. Elderwood. Do I need to talk about Elderwood? They're the most broken comp there is. Every two seconds, all Elderwood champions grow, getting bonus stats. This affects stacks up to five times. So they get 15 armor and magic resistance, and they get five attack damage and spell power. At six, it's 25, 10, 10, and at nine, it's 40, 20, 20. Uh, I think 9 is a bit excessive, but 6 is kind of standard, because uh, look at that. There's 2 Brawlers, 2 Mages, 2 Keepers. It's really, really good, because you already have like the Keeper buff, you already have the Brawl buff, and if you add uh, Aesol, then you have the Mage buff. So Elderwood is extremely powerful, because it synergizes well within itself. When I talked about, uh, when I talked about Divine, there's only... Jax and Lee Sin that work, uh, Jax and Lee Sin that work together. Cultists has like no synergies amongst themselves. Elderwood, they're all synergized. So you get two of these, two of these, like they're actually like not, you're not just going uh, like vertical, 
but you're also going horizontal. Like you have not just more uh, elder wood, but you also have more other synergies. So I think it's extremely powerful, extremely good. Um, just like some positioning tricks, you kind of want to like put your elder wood units all the way in the back row because uh, they grow every two seconds, right? Every two seconds they grow. So if the com like if combat starts and the first time units start attacking each other is after two seconds, well, you already have a stack of, of 15 armor and magic resistance and five extra damage and five extra spell power. Like you, you need to get, like you need to somehow stall out the fight for the first 10 seconds because after 10 seconds, this is 75 and this is 25. Or alternatively, this is what, 125 and this is 50 and 50. So you want to like prolong the fight as much as you can. Obviously, Eldwood Spat is great on Asol, it's great on Set, it's great on Yone. It just makes your tanks tank your Swain, obviously. Yeah, um, yeah, Samira. It makes your tanks even like more tanky, more insane. So definitely try that out. Enlightened. Enlightened champions generate more mana. Very simple. Uh, they get more mana when they attack, and they also get more mana when they get hit. So... I still think 6 is a bit excessive, but 4 is ideal, uh, especially for Talon, his mana is 40, so instead of, he gets 100 more, so 20, 20 plus 20 is 100. Morgana, her, her mana is 120, so again, 6 times 20 is 120, Irelia, it's 100, so 5 times 20 is 100. Janna, it's 70, so it's not as, as smooth, like it's going to have to be 4 times 20 to get to 80. And Fiora 75, so it's four times uh, 20 to get to 80. So ideally, ideally, it's like you want you want Janna, Irelia, Talon, and, and Morgana. Uh, if you have a chosen Enlightened, I, I suggest you either you either run Fiora as well because she has relatively decent CC. She's hard to kill even at a, as a one cost, or you can just cut Janna and put in like a, a stronger Mystic. Like if you're running Shen anyway with Irelia, then you can just put in Zillion. Exile. If an exile has no adjacent allies at the start of combat, they gain a shield equal to 50% of their maximum health and 80% lifesteal. 80% lifesteal is completely insane because it's like, uh, I think that's uh, two bloodthirsters. So Yasuo becomes unkillable. But like the only thing that's important is you want to make sure that your exile, whether you're running just Yasuo or just Yone or both of them, that they're not touching. Very simple trait. Fabled. Uh, fabled, I've... I've uh, Kind of play them a little bit and i've also heard other like good players talk about them and fabled uh champion spells are empowered from tales of their past valor so they have like a second ability i think i discussed it in in each of them especially like once i when i talked about two cost three cost four cost respectively the only thing that's kind of important to note is when you're running fable you typically want to run all three like, you don't want to Fable Chosen, although I, I did play Fable Chosen, but now I think about it, you want to have all three because the Fabled buff is just too powerful. Like, a big-ass shield, uh, empowered third third hit, or freaking AoE stun, you definitely want to run, you definitely want to run Fabled. So, uh, you definitely want to run all three Fabled. Fortune, winning combat against a player will give bonus orbs. The longer you've gone without, a, without an orb, the bigger the payout. Wins, give an extra orb with, uh, orb with rare loot. Rare loot. So uh, these are actually completely different, right? Three and six. Three, uh, you want to keep losing, and then once you stop losing, you get a huge payout. So if you have three fortune, you lose, you lose, you lose, you lose, you lose five times, for example, and then you win, and then you get some some unit, some gold, maybe a Nico, maybe an item. Uh, wow, six is a win more sort of uh, composition. And six will actually always give you an item component or an eco or something really fancy. So if you're playing three, you kind of want a lost streak and then cash out. If you're playing six, you play them a little bit later and you want to keep winning. Uh, the, th the thing is, if you're playing six, it still counts the three buff. So if you're losing a lot, the three buff stacks. And then once you win, you get your six buff. But you never want to play six if you're not going to consistently win rounds. Or like if you're not going to win at least three out of five or four out of five in a stage. Then you just drop down three and you get rid of fortune. Uh, fortune is best on stage two. Go down to stage three. Kind of risky stage four. You should probably start cutting at stage four. Like make sure you cash out on stage four and you never, never want to. You never want to run it later, because later losses you lose way too much HP and it's not worth it. Ninja. Ninjas gain bonus attack, damage, and spell power. The trait is only active when you have exactly one or four unique ninjas, and it's plus 50, 80, and, and uh, spell power. 
and 140 ADN SP when you have four ninjas. So that's that's a huge jump, right? It's almost triple. They, and it was triple for a bit. Now it's down to almost triple. And yeah, when do you want to run this? When you have Zed carry, when you have a Kali carry. Um, I don't know about Kenny carry, but definitely not Shen carry. So you only want to run four ninjas when you have good Zed items like uh, RFC Runan's QSS, Akali, like uh, RFC IE Blue Buff, RFC IE Hodge, something like that. And then obviously Kenny and, and Shen are just run as synergy bot. So you have to run all four, and you only do that when you're running the, the Zed carry or the Akali carry. Otherwise, you can just run like a random Akali. I think she's extremely powerful as like a random unit to add into any composition early game, like stage two. Uh, Zed is also relatively powerful. Kenny's real, like so. The ninjas are actually kind of uh, underpowered, but when when, he ha when they have their ninja buff active, they're I'd say a bit stronger than the the regular two, three, or four. Oh, not four cost anymore, but two, three, two or three cost. So definitely consider adding a ninja to your comp, if even if you're not running the full ninja comp. Spirit, the first time a spirit casts their spell, all allies gain attack speed, twenty percent attack speed, forty percent attack speed. This is completely busted. Because if you have two, it's 20 and four, like 20 at 20, 40. But if you have all four, it's 40% attack speed. So that's 1.6 attack speed. It doesn't, it doesn't stack. So like if a unit has one attack speed, it'll just get 0 0.4, 0 0.4, 0 0.4, 0 0.4. But essentially it will more than double the unit's attack speed. So your comp becomes very explosive. You can run this with, with Zed. You can run this with Diana. You can run this with almost anything like Kindred Carry. Your comp just explodes. You definitely want to run it like Kindred Yumi when you're when you're playing um, Kale, for example. I think this trait is extremely powerful. The boss. Uh, when the boss first drops below 40% health, he leaves combat to start doing sit-ups. Each sit-up restores 50% health. He gets a attack speed and movement speed. If he reaches full health, he returns to combat pumped up. All of his attacks and spells deal true damage. If all his allies die, he will immediately return to combat. So the thing about the boss, you want to frontline him. You want to position him so that he ulties, he grabs uh, an opposing unit, he slams it into, into their composition, then he gets below 40 health, he goes to his sit-ups. Ideally, like, really, really good if you have Zillion on your team or if you have a GA on your team to make sure that your units kind of don't die, that they revive, so that it gives Set more time to do sit-ups. And if he manages to heal up all the way to full, and you have a two-star set, you usually get like a top two because it's just super, super powerful when you have some items on him and when he's doing true damage as two-star with some decent items, that's typically it's like 100% 100 uh, damage, like with a spell. So he'll just, he'll just take shit out. So good. Warlords. Warlords have bonus health and spell power. Each victorious combat they participate in increases the bonus by 10%. Stacking up to five times. So it's 25, 250, 250 health and 25 spell power. Plus the stacks, so that's plus 10%. So that's actually, I believe, 375 and that's 37 and a half. At six, it's 750 and 75. At eight, it's, it's bonkers. But uh, it's really good. Like there's also some overlap between uh, keepers. But otherwise, it's like really good because you can run it with a lot of other comps. Like if you're running Pike, Pike is an assassin for Katarina. He's also a slayer for Trindomir, right? And then you can add in an Aatrox, who's a cultist and a vanguard. And then you can just add in like a random Zed or add in a random, add in a Samira. Samira would be perfect because Samira gives sharpshooter and she also gives slayer. So then you have like all the synergies, right? So ideally you have like Garen, Nelly, Jarvan, Trindamir, Katarina, Azir, and then you have then you have Keeper, Vanguard, um, Assassin, Sharpshooter, and Slayer. So that's probably the best cap. I think Katarina is actually quite powerful at two star. If you if you give her a QSS and maybe um, Gunblade or Hodge, I think I think she can she can pop off. But she needs like a little bit extra HP. So the Keeper buff is really important on her. Or the warlord, warlord buff or warlords and keepers just to make sure she has enough health because she's kind of squishy so she can die without ultiing. So you got to make sure that she gets her ulti off. Once she gets her ulti off, it's insane. And yeah, belt is for warlord as I mentioned before uh, with spatula. Adept. 
Adepts calm the flow of battle, re reducing the attack speed of all enemies by 50% for a few seconds at the start of combat. Now, Irelia, Shen, and Yone are all good units, so you typically want to run Adept when you can with Kale, with Talon. It's, it's just really powerful. The 2 seconds, 3.5 seconds is, is pretty big. 6 seconds is completely insane if you ever chosen Adept. You get so much extra time. Like, your opponents are attacking 50% 50 50 of the speed, so they're doing 50% reduced damage. They're also getting 50% reduced mana. So if you're running 3 Adepts, it shuts down most comps. If, if their carry doesn't have a QSS, it just shuts them down and you have a huge advantage. That's, that's just, that's just uh, you can run Adepts, you can, you can calm the flow of battle. Essentially, it, the battle goes into your favor, even if you're a little bit weaker, by having uh, more time to ramp up. Assassins. Innate at the start of combat, assassins leap to the enemy. Backline. Assassins gain bonus critical strike damage and chance, and their spells can critically strike. Uh, that's, you, need, you need two of them. If, as soon as you have two of them, their spells can critically strike. Just remember that. That's why IE is so good on any of these assassins, because they will always critically strike. And if there's two assassins, then they get critical strike damage, and this transforms into damage. So with IE, it's plus 35. If you have two, if you have four with IE, it's plus 90. Uh, six assassins is even more insane. It's plus 155. Obviously, uh, you need a chosen assassin, typically chosen assassin Diana. Then you run six assassins. Or if you get uh, assassin glove, I mean assassin spatula, it's really good. Uh, so there's a, the talent comp, Katarina comp, Akali comp, and Diana comp. And Pike is just so good. He's with Diana. He's friends with Diana. He's friends with Akali. He's friends with Talon. He's friends with Katarina. So typically, if you're running any assassin, you're always pairing it with Pike. He, has, he doesn't have, really have his own comp. He's, he's okay in cultists. But like Diana has her own comp. Nidalee has, um, sorry, uh, Ninja Akali has her own comp. Katarina has her own comp. And Talon has, has his own comp. And they all want Pike because Pike has a stun. So that's amazing. Like you really want to run, run Pike if you're running any other assassin, like one other assassin for his stun. Blacksmith. After participating in combat, Blacksmith will begin forging an artifact. The higher their star level, the faster they work. Once the artifact is complete, it will become available to bestow upon an ally. Each ally may only equip one artifact. As I mentioned in, with Orn, uh, really, really powerful. Uh, you need to be ahead. If you're ahead, if you have enough HP, if you find it early, early Orn, then let him blacksmith away. And you kind of want to dump your blacksmith once he crafts an item or two because the unit itself is, is very, very weak. Unless you need him for Elderwood or Vanguard. Um, so he's, he's kind of useless. But blacksmith is, is amazing. Like the, the trade itself is amazing. Brawler. Brawlers gain bonus health and attack damage. Now this changed from set 4 to set 4.5. So brawlers are extremely strong now. If you're going to go wide, if you're going to have 6 or even 8 brawlers, if you have 8 brawlers, like 2 brawlers, not bad, 10 attack damage. 4 brawlers, 20 attack damage. But if you manage to find 6 brawlers in the mid game, then you're ready to pop off. You are ready to pop off because 60 attack damage, especially since uh, Shivana is sort of a carry, so like if you have one of these chosen and then you have the one cost, two cost, three costs, right? So you can find all of them like late stage two, stage three. If you have your chosen chosen brawler, it's so powerful. With with six brawler and then if you can get either you go eight brawler if you can find them for like later mid game, let's say. But this can easily get you to nine, easily get you to eight. So if you have a brawler chosen, then definitely think of going going wide. Uh, the only thing that's good against it is is a giant slayer. And obviously they're all melee except for Shivana, so it's kind of tough. Like you're, you, you have no backline access. But yeah, running brawlers, they're super powerful. The additional attack damage is is great because it actually helps them do something, right? Because vanguards just are tanky and more tanky, while brawlers are tanky but they also do more damage. Duelists, uh, obviously it's just Yasuo and his buddies, right? Trinomir is actually not bad, but like Yasuo is probably the biggest carry of duelists. Duelists gain bonus movement speed, so they're just faster in moving around. That's good. Duelist attacks grant attack speed up to 8 stacks. It got reworked. It's, it's a bit stronger. So 2 duelists, great, Jax and, and Lee Sin. 4 duelists, that's like uh, Chosen Yasuo, a Fiora, and a Jax. And then 6 duelists, you want to run uh, Fiora, Jax, uh, Fiora, um, Yasuo, Jax, Lee Sin, and either Trindamir or Kalista. Uh, Trindomir is good if you have like a lot of AD items, but you typically want to put your attack damage items on, on, on Yasuo. So like magic damage, uh, any sort of uh, like Gwinsos, uh, Runans, 
RFC, that kind of stuff that, that goes on Callista. And then ob obviously like any tank items can go on Lee Sin or Jax. So that's kind of the duelist comp. Emperor. The Emperor deploys with two sand guards who can be placed anywhere on the battlefield. They do not move or attack and die when the Emperor dies. So essentially you want to make sure that the guards die before Azir does. I think I've explained Azir like uh, soldier positioning when I discussed Azir himself in, in the last video on five costs. So just, just make sure you can you can use the soldiers to like bait out ultimates like Aesol's ultimate. You can kind of block some sort of pathing for your opponent so they have to like attack the soldiers. Or you can sort of block pathing for your own unit so they don't attack frontline, like they can maybe bypass and go around the soldiers. So you can you can kind of play around with that with the pathing. Executioner. Executioner attacks and spells always critically hit targets below a certain percent threshold of health. So what I what I've discovered or like not myself, but like this card from other people, from other players, is that executioners, if you're if you're running Kale, if she's not an executioner chosen, or if Kinder is not executioner executioner chosen, then typically you just want to run two executioners. Because Kale and Kindred worked so well together, because like if you put in Yumi and like a Shen or or Janna or something, you already have the spirit and the executioner. If you have an executioner chosen though, you kinda of wanna go for, for the full four. Because the four is amazing, because like they always quit as soon as the as soon as the units drop below 100 HP. While three, it's it's not that great because um, Zaya is a little bit lost in the comp, right? So like Kindred is great for Spirit, uh, Kale can have Divine, but then Zaya is an Elderwood Keeper. You don't really want to want to run Elderwoods with Kale if, with Kale carry. You don't really want to run uh, Keepers with this. You want to run more frontline like Adept. Uh, obviously, if if uh, Zaya is the is uh, the chosen executioner and you have items on her, then these two are just the support support team, and you do want to run uh, Elderwoods. So just just uh, think about that. Like two is really good, four is really good, three is kind of mediocre because sixty six percent it's like halfway between between there they're almost dead and they're not not dead. So that that that's just my two cents. Keeper. At the start of combat, keepers grant themselves and all adjacent allies a shield for a duration. This shield is 50% stronger on keepers. So this is really, really powerful. Um, I think uh, keepers are great in conjunction with cultists. I think keepers are great in conjunction with elderwoods. Keepers are great like to stall the game for a little bit. And if you, if you get something out of that stall, like cultists that get the Galio, or like warlords that already have a lot of a lot of HP, they get even more tanky, uh, but especially uh, Elderwoods. Elderwoods uh, really you, like really utilize the Keeper buff well because they start getting their stacks before the Keeper buff expires. And obviously Kenny's really good as a Keeper because he has kind of, he's kind of squishy, but his ultimate is so, so, so good. So the Keeper buff kind of provides him with a little bit of shielding. Azir is already like a five cost. By, by the time you get Azir, Keepers are relatively irrelevant. Mages. Mages cast twice and have modified spell power. So three mages, 80% of their spell power, five, 105, seven, 135. Uh, so this, this goes up by, by 25, this goes up by 30. You typically don't want to run seven mages, like the, the additional spell power is not that great. Uh, five mages also, maybe not the best, but three is super good. Cause 80% is insane. Like if you're doing 100% damage or like what's better, 100% or two times 80. Well, two times 80 is 160. This is this goes up to okay so you have you go 100 160 210 270 right so z like 100 to 160 is the biggest jump and also if you have cc from brand and you get shielding aso is the perfect mage because he gets uh, the overcharge damage and then lulu like makes two things bigger vigar can pop off two things they're really good synergies you have a tier you can put a tier on your um hmm. who is the best yeah you you're still zillion i think zillion is the best Lee Sin is, is fine. You can put your, your tier on someone who you want to cast twice, uh, who has a like game-changing ultimate. If you're, I mean, mage cap with the tier. Mystic, allies gain magic resistance. So two mystic, it's kind of standard. You almost run it everywhere. It's, it's pretty good. Four mystic, eh, I don't think it's that strong. Like if someone's running Aesol, four mystic is not that great. Uh, if you get a chosen mystic, you can try it for six. I think six mystic, like if you're really struggling against magic damage, like, I remember I played a guy who had, like, Carrie, Diana, and Katarina. I managed to put in 6 Mystic in the late game. And it was so funny, because, like, he was building magic damage. So, like, his units did a few thousand damage, physical. But, like, I know that they were, like, a magic damage composition, but they just got completely shut down. So, 
it's too mystic just because they're really easy to splash. Like Yumi and Shen, or, or Zillion's really good, or Janna and Yumi, Janna, Shen in most comps. Uh, sometimes you want to go for four mystic uh, if there's a lot of magic damage. There are like Puffy the Dragon comps, and there are also physical damage comps. So mystic is really lobby dependent. You need to scout and decide whether you need mystic or not. Sharpshooter. Sharpshooter's attacks and spells ricochet to enemy to nearby enemies, dealing reduced damage. So, like, the ricochets are actually really weak. I think I did the math before, like, 65% reduced. If you're doing, like, if you're if the spear is doing, like, 500 damage, or even if, it does, if it's doing 1,000 damage, it goes down to 350, and then it, and it's reduced again to, like, 100-something, right? So it's, it's not that great, but what's really powerful is uh, if you have a blind right if you have some sort of huge damage so like sharpshooters are really good with, with like the only thing that's good is timo because his bind is uh it works like it doesn't matter whether it's a splash like even if it ricochets he still blinds and if you have morello on him he spreads morello really well uh otherwise apart from that like the sharpshooters are, are okay uh like obviously if you're running if you're running four 45 percent reduced damage is kind of better like if you're going to do a thousand damage it's only down to 550 right that's still decent and then it gets cut again down to like near 300 so that's that's still okay and six i've never actually run six sharpshooters i don't think it's it's worth it obviously uh the ricochets are really powerful but i don't think it's it's worth it uh you will like you really really need some frontline sharpshooters are are very powerful but if you need frontline and if there's assassins or if there's a zed uh your sharpshooters can just get picked off so it's it's difficult to position to make sure that your that your sharpshooters are protected if you're running a comp uh, like if someone's running uh, a comp that is just front to back uh then sharpshooters are perfect because they don't get hit and sharpshooters are also really good against comps that have like one very squishy carry because the ricochets will get all the way to the carry so like the tank in the front might survive but the ricochets will just bounce off of the tanks and and kill everything in the back so sharpshooters are pretty cool slayers uh, yeah, Slayers are new in 4.5. Uh, Slayers gain lifesteal that increases at lower health and deals bonus damage that increases based off their target's missing health. So it's 15 to 30% lifesteal and 20 to 45% bonus damage. That's really good. And 25 to 50% lifesteal and 30 to 75% bonus damage. Like, I think it's still really, really powerful. Like, if you're kind of stuck with some 80 items and you're not where, you don't know where you're going, if you manage to find, like, uh, Samira... And you just slam a, a Trindamir Olaf or, or uh, Samira and Trindamir Pike or Olaf Pike. It's really good because she will heal up off of her attacks. Uh, that's almost a BT. She also does bonus damage if, if their opponents are low. And her ultimate kind of just runs into the middle and fucks shit up. So Slayers are quite powerful. Uh, obviously you want to run them with Olaf so he heals a lot. Like the units themselves without Slayer are not that strong. But once you add Slayer in... Like once you have three Slayer and you're running uh, a, Zed, a Zed carry comp, a Trinomir carry comp, Samira carry, or Olaf carry, it's really, really good. So experiment with this. I don't think the ideal comp has been found yet, but uh, you definitely want to have like three Slayers on, and Samira carry. That's going to work. That always works. Have some frontline, have Samira carry. That's going to meet some easy top fours in games where I, th I was not going to top four. Siphoner. All allies heal for some of the damage they deal with spells and attacks. So if there's uh, two siphoners, it's 10% for allies, 40% for siphoners. If it's all four siphoners or a chosen siphoner, 25% uh, for allies and 100% for siphoners. So what I'm going to say is siphoners are actually really, really good because they kind of provide like a, four of them, they kind of provide like a hex deck, gunblade, like a small hex deck gunblade to all your units. And I've experimented with most units and most units ultimate, like apart from like Olaf and, and Samira, most units ultimates actually have, even if they're AD damage, like, like a Wukong or Talon, it's an actual, like, a spell. So Talon and Wukong, they both heal when you have Siphoners in. So just keep that in mind. And obviously, Swain is a really great tank. Morgana is also really good. So you can, you can almost always fit Siphoner, like Morgana and Swain, into, into pretty much any comp. And it's going to help your, like, if you have Puffy, the, the magic asshole, the dragon, if you have Siphoners with him, like, you can go a full damage build. You don't need the hex deck. You can just go, like, IE Jewel Gauntlet Hodge and put in Siphoners. And he will, like, if he has the Hodge, he will just heal to full every time. Uh, with even damage Hodge. So it's really, really powerful. Um, obviously, you can you can run early Nasus with, um, yeah, 
this siphoner right here, the, the Kata siphoner. And that, that helps you. That helps uh, like sustain your comp, sustain whenever they, whenever they cast their spell. Uh, Nasus comp, if you have a like chosen uh, Nasa siphoner, that's really cool as well. So there are, there are some ways to, to play this comp. It's, it's quite splashable, I believe. Uh, not the comp, I mean this, this trait, it's quite splashable. Vanguards. Uh, Vanguards are really good now. They get armor and magic resistance, right? Vanguard champions gain bonus armor and magic resistance. So it's 100 armor, 20 magic resistance, uh, 250, 40, 570. So like, if you can get to six Vanguard, your, your, your comp is going to be very tanky. And essentially, like, if you look at this, it's like if you're adding in Mystic. So you, Vanguards actually give themselves Mystic, which is really, really cool. Uh, obviously, 8 is a bit overboard, but I think there's a decent jump between 4 and 6. So you can consider running 6 Vanguard, and like Aatrox can be your carry. Wukong can potentially be your carry. So Juani does decent damage. And then you can have like someone in the back. Uh, but again, you need to protect it. Like, I, I ran Vanguards with, with Aesol. And yeah, if, if my ASO dies, my Vanguard doesn't really do anything. So that's just something to keep in mind. If you have a Vanguard spat and you're running like six or eight Vanguards, you just put that on your carry and your carry is never dying. So that, that's just something really cool because it, it just gives armor and magic resistance. So there's no need to put in Mystic. And yeah, Vanguard Mystic is, is okay, but right now Vanguard Vanguard is, is good as well. So that concludes today's video. Thank you for watching. And I believe uh, when you wake up, you'll be a master player.